So Jenny is a COO at uh, Walk the Chat. Uh, she's been working, helping brands be successful in the Chinese market using, using digital tools for now seven years. Uh, and more and more, Red is getting to the top of the conversation with all of our clients. It's becoming the network they care the most about. And as you will see, uh, some of our clients uh, achieved really amazing success by using a Red as a promotion channel and in the Chinese market. So we'll, we'll talk today, and Jenny will show you today, uh, what can be done with RED, what cannot be done with RED, what are the limitation of the network and how to use it uh, in order to be successful in China. So without further ado, I give the floor to Jenny uh, to tell you about uh, all about RED marketing for the Chinese market. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Jenny, and uh, today we will be talking about uh, everything that's related with Little Red Book. Uh, it's going to be quite a lot of content, so if you have any questions, you can just, as Thomas mentioned, leave it in the Q&A session, and uh, we can go through that at the end of the webinar. And uh, I guess you don't have to take notes and because we will be sending out the presentation and uh, maybe the recording after the webinar. So um, let's get started. Uh, this is the agenda for the night. Uh, we will talk about what is Little Red Book. So kind of an overview, uh, high level overview in terms of what it is, uh, how this fit in into your marketing plan. And uh, we will then look into the content strategy, specifically six ways that can make your content really popular on Little Red Book. And then it's the influencer strategy, which is maybe for me, it's personally the most interesting part um, because this is where you can really stand out compared to the competitors. And then there's the advertising strategy, the Little Red Book store. It, is, it could be a marketplace and uh, the live streaming, which is uh, the most effective way to bring sales to your Little Red Book store. So without further ado, let's get started with Little Red Book. And uh, oh, by the way, if uh, I think we have, uh, right now we have around 300 um, people viewing. So if you want to like write down where, which city you are from, I think we have people from all over the world. So you can write that in chat. Uh, but if it's a Q&A question, write this down in the panel and uh, I will review it at the end. Um, for Little Red Book, like this is uh, relatively a unique app in terms of like uh, the whole dynamic in China. It has 100 million monthly active user. So it's not such a large platform compared to apps like WeChat. For WeChat, they have 1.2 billion monthly active user. So Little Red Book is the Compare, in terms of the size of the audience, it's relatively small, but it is super important, especially when we are talking about brand marketing, because it is a channel that people would go and uh, to look for like a product review before they want to make a purchase uh, of the product. So it's uh, super important. And it's also a very, a specific channel where people, um, like uh, most of the users, they have like a strong purchasing power because most of the red users are from the top tier city. Uh, the user is also quite unique. They do have more than 90% of users are female and uh, it's relatively young. So like around half of them are under the age of 24. Uh, so this is, Overall, it's a super important channel where um, people are going to make their purchasing decision before um, and uh, to look for product review before they get started. Um, in terms of how it looks, uh, it's like on the first glance, it looks pretty much like 
Instagram. Uh, you have the product picture, uh, which usually could be very promotional. And uh, the content itself, it can be between 20 to 200 characters, usually. Um, people use a lot of emojis. And uh, overall, if you look at the uh, Little Red Book, um, as a platform, you can see a lot of like a personal content. So it's primarily not for brand, uh, so not super promotional, but it's primarily for people who are going to uh, share their shopping experience, uh, share um, their product review uh, with a community, which is uh, very, um, it's kind of a close community where people would um, engage a lot with each other. Um, and this is what brings it super interesting because uh, on this platform, there's a lot of very specific influencer in all the different industries. And uh, also all the, um, basically everyone is creating content so we call this like a user generated content. It's a perfect platform to create this kind of content. Um, and this is like a, when you look at the Chinese social media, like in terms of the consumer conversion funnel, like Reddit is super interesting because you can see it at the very beginning, which is the creating awareness of the product and as well as the very end, which is the advocacy. Uh, so which is like uh, users are creating reviews uh, to promote the brand. And uh, usually like you can create, as a brand, you can create like a lot of like a multi touch point, um, like uh, via Little Red Book to, uh, so that people can like uh, see the, discover the product and also uh, like uh, read what other people think about this. And in Chinese, this is called zhong cao, uh, which is translated as planting grass, uh, which means like planting the idea that you need to buy this product. And uh, it can go back and forth. And uh, what's interesting is, in general, when people want to make a purchase decision, they would actually exit Little Red Book and they would go to marketplace like Taobao or JD to make a purchase. Uh, we will cover this later, like a little rebel, they do have their e-commerce ecosystem, but in terms of like the general user experience, they would still go to the marketplace. And uh, after people making the purchase, uh, WeChat is actually a very good um, channel where you can create, uh, let's say the community, the WeChat group where people can really engage very closely with a brand. And then um, they can post, when it comes to like a posting, like a, the product that they got and the sharing this with friends, it also comes down to Little Red Book. And uh, when we are doing marketing, it's very interesting that a lot of times we can create the experience in the very end of the funnel, which is we can find a bunch of, uh, it could be like a micro influencer, which are users with less than 10,000 followers and uh, creating this like a user review experience so that we can reach to a larger audience and uh, pretending like these are uh, like uh, the users who really love the product. So that's actually like a, a lot of the things that we have been doing for some of the brands that we work with is to creating the, this experience um, by working with influencers. We will cover this in the influencer section. So um, there's a whole strategy that goes into that. Um, and the red actually does bring sales impact. So it's not as direct in terms of on WeChat, you can put a tracking in the, uh, in, the, in the store and you can know exactly how much the sales is coming from. But in red, you are not able to check uh, exactly where the sales is coming from. But however, like there are very, very strong evidence showing like red is able to bring sales impact. So these are two of the clients we manage at Walk the Chat. Uh, as an example, showing that the impact of red is actually pretty strong. 
um, Bobby's. This is a French shoes brand. They are brand new. So um, before they enter officially enter China, they actually only have like a 10 little red book notes. This is super small. You can almost consider like this is a brand new, um, like a brand in the Chinese market. And uh, we took this account with this three months of operation, mostly it's via influencer gifting. So gifting the shoes to the influencer and writing content on their um, little red book account. And after three months of operation without paying anything to the influencer and without paying anything in advertising, we are able to get like uh, 2,500 followers. And uh, we do drive all those traffic to their WeChat cross-border st store. So we set up like uh, this WeChat mini program store for Bobby's. And uh, we are able to see very strong like a uh, sales increase month after month. Um, and uh, so this is like uh, basically creating the sales in like conversion from scratch for a new brand. And Hunter Boots, I think most of you probably heard of them. It's an iconic, like a UK, um, like a rain boots brand. And uh, we did a red campaign a month ago. So in May, uh, specifically focusing on uh, influencers in the fashion industry. And uh, we actually gifted like a 30 influencer and only paid around 10 influencer for actually paying them to run the campaign. And uh, they have their best sales ever, like uh, since they entered the Chinese market and uh, their sales has increased around 100% year over year because of this little red book campaign. So it could bring very, very strong impact in terms of like the sales conversion. For Hunter, their sales channel is actually Taobao, um, the Tmall flagship store. So this is actually a more natural way of converting um, as a brand from Little Red Book. Uh, we will cover this later in terms of like a sales, how do you drive traffic to the sales channel? Um, and uh, little robots, they do have limitation. So in terms of the platform, we mentioned like it's relatively a small platform compared to other channels like WeChat and Douyin. And uh, in terms of the industry, it's not, also not uh, for everyone. So you can see here, like on the right, this is the amount of the note that um, is considered promotional that was posted in the last 30 days. And uh, by promotional, we um, this is a platform that they filter via keywords. And uh, the most po popular content on Red is skincare, clothing, cosmetics, uh, like a uh, fashion and there's jewelry. So these are uh, the most popular like a uh, kind of industries. So if your product belongs to any of this category and you can see like how, how much like a notes is being pulled out uh, on Little Red Book. If it's not there, then it's probably relatively a niche um, like uh, industry uh, within Red. Because I mean, in the end, they do have like 90% of users who are female. Uh, we do like, uh, for example, the, the brand that we mentioned, Bobby's, their primary target is actually male audience. It does work for if your target is uh, like a male audience, but it's better if you are like a, for example, a fashion products or um, anything that's listed here, basically. Um, in terms of the other limitations, uh, the e-commerce conversion rate, uh, it's very hard to check it. So that's why uh, I read here is low, but in terms of the impact, it can have strong impact. Uh, it's just, you are not able to really check this um, because basically they don't allow uh, external link. And uh, um, if you mention channels such as Taobao, such as WeChat or Douyin, basically the content could be censored. Uh, so I'm not sure like uh, 
how much you know about the Chinese internet, they are basically guarded guard walls. Um, like the Little Red Book is like they have their own content, um, like Douyin, Tencent, Alibaba. They all don't want to like uh, you to the traffic to go from one platform to another. They want to do everything in their platform. So um, it's super hard to um, like uh, it's not as direct. There are ways and we could, we are going to talk about this later. Um, and so that's the overview um, in terms of content strategy. Uh, for content, Little Red Book, um, they, the content on there is live longer compared to other channels. So on the bottom, you can see this is a very typical like a performance of a WeChat article. And uh, the views almost dies out after two days. And this is super typical for almost all the content, except for the content that really gets viral. And that's uh, also relatively rare um, that it could happen on WeChat. Uh, so usually WeChat article only lives for less than seven days. For Little Red Book, it's a very different story. I think it's more um, similar to uh, Instagram because the content is algorithm driven and it's also driven by the search keyword that you use. And uh, you can see there are different examples of, I just took screenshot of some uh, Little Red Book articles in the back end. And uh, it's really hard to predict when an article is going to um, get really strong. The first one, it got viral after even one month. So in general, uh, the content would still be active after one month you post it. And sometimes it could last for like up to two or three months. So it is a platform to consider for a medium term marketing. And this would impact when you are running a campaign, because uh, if you want sales to happen, let's say in July 18th, the middle year sales. And usually the Little Red Book campaign needs to start two months ahead so that the traffic could really accumulate as you go along. And uh, there are like a hacks that you can do that could really impact uh, the performance of Little Red Book. And uh, here are just some examples. And uh, I really encourage everyone, if you are operating the Little Red Book account to test um, with different pictures and the test with different content because there isn't any limitation in terms of the frequency of how you how often you post as a brand. You can post like once per day, you can post three times per day. So that's all okay. And uh, you can directly get quite a lot of impact, uh, like a feedback from the users after um, posting the content. So the first example, you can see the product picture is super clear and uh, it's actually um, the type of content that Little Red Book user likes uh, with a very clear product um, like a picture. And uh, the second one doesn't perform well. Um, it's like uh, it's not attractive enough uh, with, uh, with the shadow of the shoes. And uh, we... Uh, this is another account and uh, um, this one, the third one, it performs better because it's more um, like a user can connect with it better. First is an Asian model and then it's also like a form uh, like a day-to-day -day, like a scenario where you go to um, the supermarket to, to shop. And uh, the third one, we find like uh, the professional model picture actually does not perform that well compared to like a more of a lifestyle content. And uh, also like as a, if it's too perfect, um, it would look a bit more distance compared to, um, if you think about Little Red Book, it is uh, like a user first, a very grassroots 
um, platform. So you want to be very close to the user when you are distributing content. And actually the third one is, uh, I think it's one of the, um, like uh, you can have this kind of content by gifting to influencer and then they can create really localized content and then you can use, reduce those content that the influencer create. So that's a way to um, help to, if you don't have um, like uh, those um, Asian model or influencer created content, you can do it via this way. Uh, this is another tactic, uh, which is uh, like we mentioned, like keep posting and uh, posting often and test to see which kind of content really works for you. And uh, so one of the things that our copywriter is doing is say what has different kind of content. And uh, so for example, the first two posts, they almost look exactly the same, but the, um, the result is quite different. The first one, there's almost no engagement. The second one got like a 200 engagement. And I think from the second post, we have like a, maybe 100 people um, asking, where can I buy the shoes? So one of the takeaway is, even though the content is super similar, um, you could still try to uh, like test this out because sometimes there is this kind of random impact that goes in there. And uh, um, another thing that the copywriter did in this case is for the second style of the shoes, especially the shoes that's preferred by one of the influencers. So she takes that as an idea and uh, use that to uh, create content around um, like uh, just the second, the, the topic is like, a, how can, um, how can uh, men wear shoes in a business casual sizing? So this is a uh, super popular content. And uh, you can see like we also apply the similar kind of um, like a strategy for another brand. And uh, this also got quite strong engagement uh, of like a 1.5K engagement for this brand. Um, so it's okay to copy from the best content and uh, you should probably do it and test this out. Um, and uh, this is a research that's actually done by one of our copywriter. And uh, um, what, when you think about Little Red Book, I think it's also similar in Instagram marketing is uh, you are um, like, you can think of this as like almost like a search engine because people are going to search in Little Red Book for the keyword. So it makes like uh, optimizing the keyword super important. It's just like, uh, like doing SEO for your content. Uh, so the first thing like when you are thinking about red marketing is what are other successful content that's on red? And uh, uh, this is uh, basically you can use a couple keywords such as uh, for this one it's done for, for Bobby's, which is a French style shoes. So the copywriter use keyword like shoes, uh, French style, uh, shoes for men, this kind of keyword. And uh, she basically lists all the content that performs the best in red and uh, write them down and uh, really like a uh, talk inspiration from that to create titles because titles is quite important it's something that um, people will click into this this is like a, in the uh, in the feed but then more importantly is later when people are making a search then uh, the most popular keyword could pop up help your content to really uh, stand out um, among all the all the other content. Uh, so the thing, like for example here, uh, some of the red content is super specific, uh, like how do short people uh, wear outfits that looks skinny and elegant. And uh, actually skinny losing weight, these are like the top search keyword on Little Red Book. 
And uh, the second one is like a, how does beige color look good looking niche, um, like uh, French sandals recommendation for the summer. And a lot of the content is they want to look whiter than they look like a whiter skin and uh, skinnier. So this is like uh, the, just the top uh, topic on the, uh, on the little red book. Um, okay, so I'm looking some of the questions. Yeah, um, I think we will send out recording of the session later. Um, we will talk about Little Red Bookstore in later and uh, use only for brand which has presence in China. Um, some brand, um, it's best if you have um, I think I will go through the question later because there are quite a lot. Uh, yeah. Um, trend, like, a, so one way that you can find what is trendy in your content is by uh, like uh, looking, using tools to find out what is a hot word in your industry. And uh, when, um, in Little Red Book, like uh, so how the algorithm works is basically the keyword ranking equals to the search query, like how many people are searching for a content, like a keyword, um, times the amount of engagement that the top post. Uh, so mostly it's done by an influencer containing this keyword um, gets. And uh, this will basically the more popular the post of the influencer, the more um, like a uh, keyword ranking will um, will this keyword have. And uh, that's why sometimes you want to think about this as a daily optimization because the keyword is like the hot keyword is changing on a daily basis. Um, and uh, if you kind of catch the wave of a rising keyword, this could really help your post to get viral. And uh, this is a tool that we use internally. It's called Qiangua. And uh, they have this like a keyword ranking in each industry. And uh, you can also find like the hot topic of the day or like uh, you can compare the trending of two different keywords and uh, you can monitor some keyword. So this is a very good like a technical tool that you can use to really uh, find those keywords and uh, use this in your content. And uh, yeah, here are some examples of the top keyword for the fashion category and this changes every day. So it's like, uh, if you really want to get really technical, that's something that you can look into. Um, oh, by the way, the way that you include keyword in content is you can just include this in titles, the content, or at the end, you can put a bunch of, um, it's kind of like hashtag, but it doesn't create a link. Uh, so basically you can put like a, all those keywords all um, at the end and uh, this will be okay. How long should be the post be? It actually really depends on what type of account you are running. Uh, the influencer account, the first one, she's very popular fashion influencer and uh, all of her content is like a, just contains emojis. So there's nothing like a written test, but you can see the engagement is super strong. Like she got 15,000 likes just for this post. Uh, so a super viral post with just like a three emojis. Uh, for most of the brand's content, they could be long. Uh, like this, like uh, for Caro, the shoes brand that we manage, it's like a 500 character, like a, almost like writing a whole article. Um, but it does work. Like uh, it contains quite a lot of uh, like a strong keyword. And as you can see, like at the end, like this is how they include quite a lot of like a keyword in the very end with a separation sign. And the perfect diary, this is like the top um, cosmetics brand in China uh, that got popular via Little Red Book. And this is how their content looks like. Uh, quite a lot of emoji, uh, like a uh, super cute and uh, uh, structured and uh, uh, 
um, a lot of the interesting keyword is also in there. So um, that's something that you can, as a brand, you can test with this kind of content. Some brand, if you want to be, um, like if you want to, uh, if your positioning is premium or very luxury, you can also try shorter content but um, then it would limit in terms of like uh, the amount of keyword you can put in there. And uh, this is another hack, especially for newer brand, which just enter Little Red Book and no one knows though, or if you are larger and you want to create engagement, uh, this is a very good tool, which is you can do a lucky draw uh, on Little Red Book and a lucky draw would be um, you have to enter the official little red book lucky draw, which is they are going to pick user completely random by the system. And uh, the users have to follow the account, they have to bookmark and they have to like the post. And uh, by doing these three actions, they are actually increasing the popularity of the post. Thus, it's possible that the post could get viral. And uh, it's true, like because it is like a giveaway, giveaway so free gifting, then uh, part of the user coming from this like a lucky draw is going to be low quality. And they probably just want the free gift. And as this happens usually during maybe the first day of the campaign is some users are targeted just to uh, participate in this kind of campaign. But what we realize is, for example, for the second brand, which is a UK handbag brand called Demilia, when we do the campaign in the first day, most people, they just want to get the bag for free um, and uh, basically free riders. And then the second day, we start to um, like get people who are really asking, oh, where can I buy this bag? And uh, we got like 500 users asking like uh, this question uh, by the end of the campaign, um, because there are enough users who are um, like uh, clicking and liking, uh, bookmarking this product, uh, this, uh, this post, this really helps to spread this content to their like uh, their friend group. So every time you comment or every time you like uh, bookmark this content, your friends is going to know like uh, you are doing this. And eventually this spreads to this group that is our target market. So this will help a lot um, to, it, it could lead to good um, impact. And uh, when we do it, um, most of the brand we work with are in the premium fashion industry. So um, like we wouldn't do this too often. Um, like uh, for example, new product launch or uh, sales season, this could be a good time to launch this campaign. We also work with some more budgeted uh, category products. And for those ones, we're doing this on a monthly basis to create more engagement, but their product average price is also much cheaper around like a 20 USD. So that's, uh, that's okay. We just want as much people to follow us as possible for some of the other brands. So that's it for content. And uh, the next one is influencer strategy. Um, this is a typical campaign spending plan that we would do for our clients. And you can, we can start from the left. Uh, this is like how much budget we would allocate in terms of um, like on red, like how much we will allocate, we will allocate 15% to ads and uh, around half to paid influencer and then 30% to gifting and the seeding, which means like a gifting the product to the influencer in exchange for them to take photos or videos and uh, expose the products on their account for free for the brand, uh, which is pretty good deal for the, for the brand. They're just giving out the product. And uh, on the right, 
this is like uh, how many influencers we usually work with um, on like uh, here I separate them into four tiers. Um, so the tier one is usually the top level influencer and uh, they cost maybe 10k USD to posting one articles and uh, they have um, average view of more than 100K uh, per post per influencer. And then we usually work with like a couple influencer in this tier and a couple more on tier two, like uh, those are like a cheaper, like uh, who are able to have um, like, a, uh, but still like a very good for impression and then uh, third tier a bit more and uh, you can notice like on the fourth tier which are influencers with like a post view under 10k this influencers we actually tend not to pay them and we pay them with the product uh, you can see most of the influencer we work with is actually in this category. And this is super important because uh, for one is it's possible that even the users who don't have a lot of followers, it's possible their content could get popular and uh, get viral because um, if the picture is nice and uh, if the keyword is right, it's possible that it could get viral and you get great value for the money. And it's also important that all this post is actually going to help you to drive up the, the, the popularity of the brand on Little Red Book um, in this community. So all this, like uh, with the larger influencer and also with the smaller ones, this create a ripple effect when it comes to marketing um, on red. And uh, here is our guideline for how do we find influencers. And, uh, and first, like a little red box, they do have an official influencer platform. And uh, I put the link here. And with this platform, you are able to find the influencer by industry, by tax, by followers, price, gender, and location. They do charge a 10% service fee, um, but not all the influencers are listed. So for example, um, some of the celebrities, they're not listed, they're not associated with red. And uh, uh, so you can fall like a rank um, the followers by followers and the price, but not by how popular they are like in the last, let's say, 30, uh, 30 days. So uh, it could be something that they accumulate as, um, as a history. Like a, and uh, they provide the precise pricing of each influencer. So it's very simple to find out how much each influencer costs on red. So this is where you want to go when you want to place the order working with influencer. Um, the second one is a third party website that uh, we find it very useful. We use it all the time. Uh, they have more influencer listed and uh, because they also like uh, uh, give an estimate of how much each influencer cost. And uh, what's very, very useful is this platforms, they will give you like a how much percent of this account has like an active follower. And this is super important because you want to work with uh, influencer with more active follower because um, this is just shows a lot more uh, loyal to this influencer compared to the ones that probably don't have enough quality influencers uh, followers. And uh, uh, they, they can provide an estimate pricing, but that's just an estimate based on the follower amount. So it's a good tool that you can use for research. And uh, in general, um, I would say Little Red Books, they do want everyone to place order via their official KOL platforms. But in reality, not everyone does that. And this is because, um, like you can have a deal with the influencer under the table and uh, you are going to risk the content being censored by the 
platform if it gets too viral and if you don't place the order with the influencer via their official platform. But it is going to save you 10% of the service fee from the platform. And a lot of times, especially when you're working with like a tier two or tier three influencers who are not uh, such a, like a top tier influencer, um, sometimes you can go by like uh, the content could be more uh, native in terms of like a, it can be native advertising that it doesn't even look like a promotion. Then those are the content that you can just purchase without uh, going through the platform. The good thing with the platform is you are 100% guaranteed that the platform wouldn't censor the content. And it also gives you the opportunity to later use this content as an advertising. We will cover ads in the next section. And so for the like a tier four influencer, and sometimes we also give to larger influencers. Uh, this is our process in terms of working with influencer. Uh, so we identify, after we identify the influencer, we will give them products. And uh, a lot of times, if you are relatively small and you want to start more in an organic process, then you can choose maybe 20 to 50 influencer to gift every month. And this gives you a very good variety because not everyone is going to guarantee that they are going to post uh, on the on the um, on the channel, and uh, especially the larger influencers, they are definitely not going to guarantee. But if they do, I'm going to share the content. It's going to create a very strong, uh, like a marketing value for the brand. Uh, and uh, we measure the exposure and then sometimes we would arrange paid campaign if the product gifting result is good. And then we will work with the influencer to gift, uh, especially after new product launch, we usually do another round of gifting to the one that we think is a good fit for the brand. Um, you are able to gift to celebrities and uh, this would work actually not only on Little Red Book, it also works on Weibo, which is probably a stronger channel for celebrities. And uh, um, the way we do it is we work with um, designer uh, studios, showrooms, and a stylist of the celebrity, and uh, we would give to them um, like uh, when they need to borrow the products and uh, to go on a, like a photo shoot uh, or a TV show. And uh, this is a super good way to get some of the products onto the top tier in like a celebrities without actually having to pay the endorsement fee. And uh, that's, uh, that's something that's definitely recommend, especially uh, it's uh, super effective. Um, it's a bit of by chance, like you can't always guarantee that it's going to work, but if they do, it's going to pay off. Um, this is just some examples of the uh, seeding that we do for some of the brand. So for some brand, like uh, every month they gift like 4K USD worth of products on Little Red Book. And in terms of the marketing value they get in return, it could be like a huge, like a 20K USD worth of marketing value. And the way we measure marketing value is by uh, calculating, go to the uh, official platform and calculating like how much it would cost if we pay this influencer to create this video or create this post. And uh, uh, so you can see some of the posts is super viral and that they can create very nice content for the brand. It also works for smaller um, like uh, brands that's not that well known in China. And uh, you can always find the style that fits for the brand. Uh, like uh, this is a brand that's more unisex and uh, they, um, they, like, uh, they work a lot with like musicians and uh, rock band. And uh, that's like the type of um, influencer that you can reach to uh, on Little Red Book. 
Um, and uh, here are a couple criteria that we would consider that when we choose which influencer we want to work with on a paid base. So these are higher quality influencer and we would actually pay them to create a content um, because most likely if we give to them, uh, they're not going to um, post for free, like as uh, they will charge, but it's uh, it's worth it. So these are some of the criteria. The first is we would look at like the engagement to follower ratio. This is super easy to find. So if you look into any little red book account and uh, on the bottom, you can see like on the profile page, you can see the follower amount, you can see the engagement amount and uh, you can divide that. If it's over two, then it's a relatively good engagement. So this is like our cutoff bar. We want to work with influencers who has strong engagement. Um, we also look into like almost every post and we want to make sure like every post has more than 200 engagement. So this will really help to make sure like in general, like they have a close uh, relationship with their followers on a daily basis. And uh, it also uh, would make sure like uh, the latest content that's posted is like uh, popular. It's not like a uh, super old, like uh, two years ago, the influencer was popular and then they are not anymore. Uh, we will analyze the con comment. Um, on Reddit, there are a lot of fake uh, data and uh, it's actually on every social media channel in China. There are fake followers, fake uh, engagement and uh, um, that's something that you do need to be more aware, and that's where comment is really going to tell you a lot of the information. And the real comment often contains specific product information, so that's something that you want to watch out for. And um, if it's super genetic, everything, everyone is asking the same thing, then you probably want to be more careful with this influencer. And uh, we also look like, uh, does this influencer operates live streaming? And uh, live stream, it's very hard to fake the live streaming um, audience because that's a lot of work. Uh, you can do that, but usually only the high quality influencer is even going to think about uh, doing live streaming on Little Red Book. Uh, because most of the time, if you want to fake data, you will fix the live streaming data on other platform like Taobao and uh, Douyin. Um, I don't think anyone would bother to fake data for live streaming on Little Red Book. Um, and uh, this is another criteria that we would consider is the follower demographic. And uh, the first one is like uh, we you can go to the back end of Little Red Book and uh, you are able to see how strong the follower growth is in the last three months. And uh, it's important to work with a trendy influencer versus like uh, someone who don't have any follower increase uh, in the late last three months. Um, that's just common sense. And uh, also you can look at the location, the gender, the age of the follow uh, of the influencer and they're trying to match that with the brand. And uh, something that probably you want to be careful with is we do notice the influencer style and the, the expectation for the influencer is different. Um, in China and the, compared to in the West, you might be working with super different kind of influencer. And uh, I think it's important to keep an open minded um, approach. Uh, a lot of brands, they would want to find the influencer that matches the style of their like um, general look, uh, which makes sense. But sometimes, especially when you want want to see the real result, like especially if you are a smaller brand, then you probably want to consider working with influencers who are normally not the style of like uh, your brand, but is able to provide very strong performance. That's usually a conflict when we work with a lot of the brand. Some influencers, they took beautiful pictures, but then the 
the impact, the engagement, and the sales conversion is just not good. Uh, so you kind of have to choose between, like, uh, do I want to have great like content in terms of I can use for marketing and the PR, or do I want to drive real result, which is like a sales? And uh, that's something that I guess um, this will impact the uh, decision when you are selecting influencer. This is another uh, tool that we use. And uh, I post a link below so you can use the tool as well. Uh, so it's a platform where you are able to uh, monitor. It's a very good platform to monitor um, how your own brand is doing and how your other competitor is doing. So how it works is you are able to put in a keyword and this keyword could be your brand name. It could be your competitor's brand name. And uh, basically this platform, they allows you to export all the related little red book notes containing the brand content. So the example that I use here is, um, I think it's Poland. Um, uh, yeah, it's Poland. So it's a French bag brand. And uh, basically it gives me an Excel of um, all the influencers that um, like promoted this brand in the last, um, I think maybe two weeks. And uh, in the order of the most strongest engagement to the least. And uh, you can learn a lot from what your competitor is doing by looking into what kind of content they're posting, what kind, what the kind of content that performs well, and uh, what kind of influencer that is able to bring strong impression um, and the engagement. So that's uh, um, that's a very um, good tool to really uh, analyze like the performance of the brand. And uh, something that uh, you can notice is you are able to see like the comment rate of the, each post. And uh, in general, you want to work with influencers who are able to generate more comments. Um, so more engagement is better. And uh, at the end, like, uh, like uh, once you select the influencer, giving the proper brief to the influencer is super important. And uh, this will, goes back to like uh, what works as little red book content. So you want to make sure to have good cover pictures. You want to make sure the content is not super commercial so that it still matches what the influencer's personal style is. Uh, you want to optimize the keyword uh, so that you can use all those tools that we talk about in the content section. And uh, you also want to consider using advertising to promote the best performing post. And this brings us to advertising. That's actually something that I think uh, if you are used to Instagram marketing, then you are super used to display ads, um, but it's a different platform. It's not the same. Uh, so let me start with, uh, usually when thinking about ads on Little Red Book, uh, this is relatively the same, like, uh, uh, mentality is you can start to monitor if a post works well. And uh, you can see, for example, for this one, after a week of um, posting the content, the content organically get a wave of um, like likes. Uh, so this is an initial sign that this content is uh, a good content and it's getting kind of viral. And uh, with this kind of content, you want to contribute and you want to uh, like uh, the, the impression by uh, actually putting on more ads to help them to push this content to um, a larger audience. And uh, on red, there are three types of ads. Um, it's newsfeed ads, basically it's only for personal account. Mostly it's used by influencers 
And uh, for the brand, really, you just have two options, the newsfeed ad for the brand and also the search ad. Uh, we only recommend using like a 10% to 15% of budget on ads. This is very different from Instagram marketing. And uh, this is because um, the red advertising platform is sucks uh, in terms of like uh, how specific the targeting is. Uh, there's no retargeting. There's um, the targetings are super general, like uh, so. It's not the best tool in terms of if you want to drive result, like a sales result from this campaign. But it's a very good tool to help you to push the content to a wider audience. Um, so there's quite a lot of limitation with how the ad is. But in general, like when you are running a campaign, you want to leave like a ninety percent to 80% of budget to paying the influencer when it comes to red uh, and only a very small portion on like a display ads. I think it's the opposite when it comes to Instagram, um, but that's um, limitation because um, there's no retargeting option. So it's just super hard to get very specific with targeting. Um, the first one uh, of the type of ad is the newsfeed ad for personal account. And uh, that's something that as a brand, you don't have to worry too much about because that's only something, uh, only the influencer is going to use it because you have to be a personal account to use this, this type of ads. It is more expensive, um, almost like around five times more expensive compared to the brand ads. So that's another way that not to use it. And uh, it only leads engagement to personal accounts. Um, the good thing is the content is more native because it is coming from the influencer's post. And uh, it's also um, something to use like uh, if you have a hard KPI to meet and uh, that's something you can use to buy uh, traffic. Uh, we don't recommend using that though. Uh, this one is for brand and uh, it's called newsfeed ads for the brand. And uh, here I list like, a, it's a kind of like a bidding system for um, depending on the targeting that you select. Um, and uh, I list a couple of the popular industries, like how much it's going to cost for uh, CPM uh, in terms of USD. And uh, it's relatively cheap. And the click-through rate is also good. So here, click-through rate is people clicking into the post and reading more um, of the content. And uh, um, it's super general, though, because in terms of which, like, uh, what kind of targeting, like, they don't give you too much type of option when you are doing this ads. It's uh, super simple backend. Basically, you can only choose from 20 categories. And uh, uh, like, for example, I want to target the whole beauty, the users who are interested in beauty. You cannot say, oh, I want to target uh, this specific, the, the followers of super, like a perfect diary and the people who engage with them in the last three, three weeks. So nothing like that. Um, and uh, in terms of the ads budget, among the, all the ads budget, I think you can consider putting 70% of the budget into newsfeed ad. One of the very important reason is it does has more traffic compared to other type of ads. So it's easier to spend the, in terms of the daily spending. It's easier to create uh, content that uh, could get viral uh, with this. Um, and uh, when it comes to optimizing the ad, um, there you can optimize the content, the pictures, and it will have a very strong impact in terms of the click-through rate. So this is just two examples of the same post, but with two different kind of cover picture, and the one clearly performs better. Um, but then um, the content optimization, that's about it. There isn't too much uh, you could do with optimizing red ads uh, on this one. 
for keyword ads, it is more expensive. And this is the only type of ads that you can be more specific. So let's say, for example, you can be as specific as you want, uh, but then it also means like the traffic probably isn't going to be so much traffic. So sometimes if you are too specific, too specific, then it's possible that you cannot spend all the money that you have. Um, so click through rate is similar, but at least you can be very, uh, you can put the brand name, the competitor name when it comes to um, like uh, targeting the user. Uh, and uh, in general, you can spend around 30% of the ad budget on the keyword search ads. Um, the way that you can define the keyword, and there are a couple of tools you can use. Uh, so on the little red book backend, the official backend, usually they tell you what type of content is most popular for your brand, like uh, in, in the past, like uh, when you post content. And uh, uh, also there are tools like Tiangua, which is a tool that we showed before. Like uh, this is a tool that can create like uh, this kind of a keyword cloud. So you can use some of the keywords from there to create like uh, um, the target keyword. And uh, you can split this keyword into like a uh, different categories and uh, analyzing which category performs better so that you can optimize it to only keep going with the one that can perform the best. Uh, for example, for this one, uh, like as a music festival, it was actually the best performing uh, like, uh, like a keyword that we realize and that we just keep pushing on this keywords. Um, okay, so this is the last part, the store and live streaming. Uh, this is Little Red Box Store. So they do have the store. Um, you can consider this as a marketplace. And uh, as far as a marketplace goes, Little Red Book is also almost like one of the cheapest uh, platform that you could have to open a store. Uh, and uh, they only take 5% commission. And uh, you can have like, uh, uh, this is the deposit is refundable and uh, there's no yearly fee, there's no technical fee. So really it's not much cost when you want to create a little red book um, store. Um, they do provide a logistic solution if you are shipping cross-border and uh, they are able to provide like cross-border payment settlement. So that's the good side. Um, but it's not super popular in terms of like sales channel and uh, uh, there are reasons uh, for that. Um, one of the reason is with Little Red Book Store, basically um, we, we actually interviewed someone from Little Red Book and the person told us like 90% of Little Red Book Store sales is coming from live streaming. So this means live streaming is important, but it also means like in terms of organic traffic, you actually, as a brand, you, it's very hard to get organic traffic on Little Red Book. Um, you basically have to rely on promotion to get those sales traffic. And uh, that's probably one of the major reasons that why a lot of brands that they actually don't have their own Little Red Book store. But when it comes to live streaming, it's a super effective way to bring traffic and to drive the traffic to sales channel. Uh, Red is open to two different sales channel when influencer does live streaming. The first one is you can lead the traffic to the little Red Book store. The second is the traffic could be lead to Tmall store. So uh, either way would work. Um, and, uh, um, but even for live streaming, uh, Red is still relatively a super niche 
platform when it comes to live streaming in terms of the traffic. Um, so I put like the top two, like uh, the, the female influencers, they are the top red influencer. Uh, so here are the data. Um, as a as far as like a live streaming goes, uh, probably you've heard about like a super crazy number of the conversion uh, that's happening in Chinese market via live streaming, and those numbers usually comes from either Taobao, uh, mostly from Taobao or JD or even like a Douyin, the Chinese TikTok. Um, you probably wouldn't would never hear it from Little Red Book because the top influencers. On average, like they are able to sell around, like the top one is only able to sell 8K USD in terms of product. So as in like in total, like this is really not a lot in terms of the sales. When we run WeChat campaigns, we can easily reach to like a 30K USD of sales uh, from like a one just article post, uh, maybe on the second line. Uh, so that's not even the like a top tier influencer. So it's not a lot of sales. And uh, if you compare to Douyin, like so, uh, the the guy on the right, like he is a kind of a tech influencer, uh, super popular in China, and uh, he um, like a typical like a uh, live streaming sales from his like a uh, Douyin live streaming is like 1.6 million USD. So Red is super small, like in terms of the red, uh, like the limitation of the uh, live streaming. And uh, another thing is in terms of the product that it could sell, uh, I realized the top influencers, a lot of the like uh, products that they do via live streaming is in cosmetics or in uh, skincare. So this is the most popular uh, type of products that they would um, sell. And uh, I guess those products, they also have a super high profit margin. So that is easier to work with live streaming uh, influencer because they take commission um, to, uh, to run these shows. Uh, something that's read is way ahead of any other channel is the average order. Uh, the average order amount is uh, is easily can reach to 80 to 60 USD. And uh, compared to all the other channels, this is super high. Uh, so for example, for like uh, this guy, uh, Luo Yonghao, his average order is only 13 USD. And this is probably on the higher side when you are thinking about Douyin live streaming or even Taobao. So red users, uh, they, are, they do have much higher purchasing power, but they are also a relatively small and tight community. Uh, you can also like, like live streaming mostly is for sales, but it could also generate super strong branding impact. And uh, this is how it did for one of the brands that we work with. It's called Hoosh. It's a French jazz brand. And uh, we just helped them to launch, uh, I think, in March uh, or a bit earlier. So just like a three months. And uh, so this is uh, one of the top tier influencer on Little Red Book. Her price is around 10K USD. Uh, if you work with her on, like, uh, on commercial base, but she also um, can have like a very creative way to work with her via gifting and uh, relationship building. Um, but so for example, like uh, she did a live streaming for Hoosh um, the, the dress brand and uh, actually before the live streaming and after the live streaming she keep posting content about the brand uh, so two days before the live streaming she did a preview and then one day before she did another video to share like other products from this brand uh, after the live streaming two days after she continues to post videos and uh, two weeks after the live streaming, she just continues to post. And uh, you can see the content, it gets more and more popular as this influencer post. And uh, this creates 
a super viral topic about the brand. And uh, because the brand just entered China like uh, three months ago in March, uh, and because of the engagement with this influencer, basically they are able to get like um, more than 40K uh, like uh, followers on Red, which is a super big uh, amount like uh, on this platform in just two months. And uh, mostly thanks to this influencer. And uh, the founder, because it's a brand that's uh, like uh, funded by um, a French influencer. And uh, she also launched her personal account on Little Red Book. So this is actually another thing is if your brand have a very strong influencer as a leader, uh, it's also um, like a, as something that you can launch as a personal brand on Little Red Book. And the content, it could be directly copy from Instagram, or it could be even just in English, or you can just simply translate. Uh, I've seen this have been, been done for different celebrities and uh, they all work. So it's a very good way to use the personal account because you do want to appear pers like a more personal and close to the user. So it's a super, uh, like a good way to um, like, create your own like a personal account while promoting for the brand. And uh, because um, the red like a, you, like a, like you can see like here it's on the, a lot of the brands they actually do not have a little red book store. Uh, and this is on the left. Uh, some of the brands, they are super big, like Adidas, SK2, Lancome, like they, uh, as, as big as these brands are, like they actually don't have Little Red Book, but they do have like uh, dozens of distributors who are selling their products on Red. It's very popular that you can enter the Red store via distributor. Um, and uh, on the left, these are a couple brands that do have Little Red Book store. And uh, here are a couple scenarios that you want to consider to have a red store. Uh, so for example, your brand is performing super strong on Little Red Book. This is a very good base to have the traffic. And um, you want to do a lot of live streaming uh, on Little Red Book. So I interviewed some uh, brand owner and they're saying that um, the reason that they have Little Red Book Store is purely because they want to focus on the live streaming and that's it. In general, they still drive all the traffic to Tmall uh, instead of to Red Store. Um, you, if you don't work with distributors, like as a brand, as a business, um, model, like you are D2C brands, and it's also another way that you can create a red store. And also because Little Red Book, they do provide the cross-border um, like a solution. So for some brands, like if you want to have your sales channel in China, it's something to consider because they do provide the logistics solution, the warehouse, and then they also provide like a cross-border payment. So it is uh, much cheaper compared to Tmall. So it's something that you can try. Uh, as one of the sales channel before uh, you are big enough to launch on Tmall. Um, and uh, if you don't have a store, where would all the sales go? Like uh, when people, this is um, like an analysis when people close the little red book store, 77% of the users, it actually goes to Taobao. So Taobao is still the largest e-commerce marketplace in China and uh, it's always um, it's still going super strong and then there's a Pinduoduo and then there's JD and other channels so that's naturally when people are thinking about making an order that's where um, if you don't do anything in the post uh, it's super organic content then this is most likely where user is going to look for your brand um, in in the channels 
uh, you can like uh, orchestrate how people are going to visit and fund your sales channel, uh, especially because a lot of the brands that we work with, they actually don't have, they are not big enough to have Tmall and then they only have a WeChat store. Uh, or if you do have Tmall, then you still want to drive user to the right Tmall store because you might have be competing with a lot of the fake stores, which also happens like when your um, when your trademark got registered by some other people, then it could happen to oversee brand. And this is when you want to consider how can I direct the traffic to those channels? Because remember, like for red, like I say, basically block all the external app like uh, all the all the content if you mention wechat they're going to block the content and you don't even know that but this is how you are going to do it so uh we usually pin like uh, one of the, this kind of post uh on top of the account and uh, this is a picture and in the picture we use very discreet wording to describe WeChat mini program and uh, we share the ID. So this is like a how to buy. And um, when people comment in a post, we cannot ask them to just like uh, go to WeChat mini program because that will be uh, banned by the platform. But we tell them to follow us or go to the first picture in the account where you can find the buying channel. And the second way is uh, on the top is kind of like the story, uh, like you have the four different uh, like uh, stories. You can create an incentive. In this case, like uh, it basically says, if you send a private message to the account, you might be able to get a gift. And uh, in this private message, you are able to share, for example, a coupon to your specific sales channel or um, like, uh, like the details of the sales channel. The uh, so annoying thing is they just block auto reply like, uh, if this contains anything that's leading traffic to outside of red. So um, like uh, you would have to manually reply to all, all those messages. So you will need someone like who would be able to kind of like handle the customer service in this case. But this does work. And uh, that was how we help um, to drive all this traffic to the right sales channel. Because like, uh, like if the sales channel is not Taobao, then uh, people are ne never going to know like uh, you actually is selling on like this WeChat mini program store. So that's it for conclusion. WeChat is a very good platform for uh, like a sending product review and uh, it will impact users purchasing decision. And uh, the content, it, it can be manipulated via very specific tactic, just like how you do SEO. And uh, for influencer campaign, it is the most effective way to drive traffic and uh, convert into sales. And uh, we suggest to invest like uh, around only around 10% uh, of their marketing budget in ads because it's not as effective as you want it to be. Um, and e-commerce conversion, it happens via live streaming and you can direct the traffic to other marketplace via different tactics. Uh, so it, you don't have to have a red store, but you could um, like uh, you could work with the distributor to sell your products. So that's it. I'm going to read in the Q&A uh, and uh, find a couple of questions. And, uh, and this is our contact info. So hold on. And hold on. So how was the new WeChat mini program integration affect the usage of the effectiveness of RED? 
um, it actually doesn't impact much because uh, you are able to search, um, like in ads, you are able to add mini program, but they charge quite a lot. Like uh, it's like a package and you have to, I think, the, uh, like you have to pay a package to um, a monthly subscription to buy this keyword. If you want to lead the traffic from Little Red Book to WeChat mini program and the, the pricing that they set up, it's almost, it's not worth it. It's way more expensive compared to uh, like any keyword ads or like a like a streaming ads, but I know like a luxury brand does it. I think Gucci is one of the um, case that does do like the search of the brand and jumps into a mini program. So if you are a luxury brand and uh, you do have the marketing budget, you could do that um, because um, like uh, the brand positioning doesn't allow you to open red store and you want to maintain the luxury um, image in the WeChat mini program, then it works. Uh, but for most of the brand, I think it doesn't impact that much. Um, is red good for food and beverage, specifically alcohol and the spirits? Uh, that's a good question. I do see quite a lot of food and beverage uh, posts there. I saw more content on Douyin about alcohol and the spirits. So if you want to choose a platform, I would actually suggest Douyin as a primarily like a platform. They do have more um, like an audience group and you can be a lot more specific. And Douyin actually have a very amazing like a display ads backend. You can be super targeted. So probably that's a better platform for uh, if you want to pick a platform. Uh, but if you um, want to be multi, different uh, social media channels and uh, why not? Because this is still a very good channel to create like as a uh, user generated content. Uh, how is red positioning itself towards Chinese user consumer given the growing competition from Douyin and the Bilibili? Uh, I think, they are trying a different thing. So for example, they are trying live streaming, they're trying short videos, like a video would get more um, uh, like a push um, compared to pictures and they're trying e-commerce. Um, but in terms of the user, Douyin is just so much bigger and uh, Bilibili is also quite strong. I would say the industry is also super different. So for Red, a lot of the brand, it's kind of like in the premium position and their audience is, has a higher purchasing power. Uh, Red as a history, like they actually started as uh, like a shopping tip platform to buy stuff from Hong Kong. So that's why a lot of the focus is actually like cross-border. Like you want to buy overseas brand, like a premium brand and have a nicer lifestyle. And uh, that's how like, uh, uh, I think for a particular brand, like a red is a very like a important marketing, like a marketing um, platform but uh, if you want to reach to a larger audience or if you are in a different industry, then uh, definitely um, use other platforms. We, uh, it's like a specific to each brand. Uh, uh, for B2B marketing, I think it's hard. I would not suggest to use read as b2b because just because the ads backend is not uh good enough uh you can consider other platforms such as for b2b um you can think about Zhuhu, which is the chinese quora like a q a like a platform or uh, like a um like depending on the industry there are more vertical apps that you can do marketing on um, 
Okay, so this is a private message. Uh, okay, so sorry, that's my dog. Uh, where do you find a list of words that gain the most engagement? Is there a list? Yes. Um, that was back in the keyword search page. So once I send out the presentation, there is a hyperlink where you can actually download the most popular keyword in your own industry and the most trendy ones you can compare it between each keywords and um, um, that's a useful tool to use. Um, so... Okay. So I think I'm just going to take two more questions because we are over time. And uh, if you have more specific questions, you can send us email at info at walkthechat.com and uh, we will be able to get back to you or you can directly write to me. So uh, let me find like the last two questions. Uh, what's the price level of influencer do you recommend for luxury goods? Um, I would say um, you can think of this as like the pyramid structure, like you want to work with influencers in all kinds of tiers to have the best impact. So I would say you can work with the top tier influencer, which is like a 10K USD. You can also work with the middle tier, the, uh, also um, like uh, other tiers. So I think uh, it's, you can select different kind of influencer and this is going to impact quite a lot. And uh, you can also use ads if you want to be um, like uh, less accessible, like to maintain the luxury image. Um, is there any foreigner influencer in Little Red Book? Uh, if yes, there is very successful one, uh, yes. Uh, the Kardashians are actually on Little Red Book and uh, there's quite a lot of influencers that's um, like they both have um, very strong following on Little Red Book. Uh, there's quite a lot. So you can, uh, uh, yeah, you can, you can find uh, super popular ones. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, sorry, I can't go through all the questions. They're all super good questions, but we do um, run out of time already. Uh, but thanks everyone for attending. And uh, if you uh, like the webinar, we are going to probably going to have another one, uh, maybe next month, maybe on a different platforms, uh, like Douyin Marketing or Billy Billy Marketing, if you are interested. So um, yeah, keep in like a uh, stay tuned, and we will send you the recording and the presentation to you um, maybe by this week. Yeah, thank you. Bye bye.